Hey guys, Ross with RV Tips and Travels. This video is gonna be a little outside of the box of our normal videos. It will be the first episode in a three-part winterizing series. One of the reasons we made this video was to provide information on the two primary methods of winterizing a camper. The other two videos in this series will be process videos, one showing you how to winterize using antifreeze and the other showing you how to winterize using compressed air. Now what this video is not going to be is a lesson on which method is right and which method is wrong. Instead, I just wanna focus on some of the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. I personally use the antifreeze method, but both methods will work if done properly. You'll find there are a few people who are very passionate about one method over the other. I just think it's a decision that each person should make based on their own research, their own budget, and what their personal preference is. The other reason I made this video was for you guys to get down in the comment section below. Let us know what method you choose, why you choose it, and any experience you have with winterizing a camper. That way, all the people watching this video have access to as much information as possible. Now, the ironic thing is no matter which method you choose, both methods to be done properly will require antifreeze and an air compressor. I know that sounds contradictory, but for example, if you're using antifreeze, you still need to blow out certain lines like the black tank flush port. And if you're using the compressed air method, you still need to put antifreeze in your P-traps. You'll understand more of that when you watch the actual process videos. But for now, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages to both. It's tough to say which method actually takes longer. For example, using the compressed air method doesn't require you to change antifreeze bottles, clean up antifreeze splatter, or to recycle the antifreeze. On the contrary, you are most likely spending more time at each faucet running compressed air through it than you are antifreeze. I think the antifreeze method under similar conditions might take a little bit longer than using compressed air, but the difference in time is pretty insignificant. This one is easy. Antifreeze costs about $3.50 per gallon or higher depending on where you live. You're also gonna have a cost of using a lot of paper towels when you use the antifreeze method. So the obvious winner is compressed air when it comes to cost. Air is probably the only thing on this planet that is not known to cause cancer in the state of California, but I put chemicals in quotes because propylene glycol, which is an ingredient of certain types of antifreeze, is also in drink mixes, dressings, cake mix, soft drinks, popcorn, food coloring, fast foods. Now I'm not a chemist, but I do think there is this misconception that antifreeze is this horrible chemical to put in your plumbing lines. And based on the research that I've done, that doesn't seem to be the case. Especially since propylene glycol is in so many food products and you're not actually consuming the antifreeze. But I'll leave it up to you to decide what is right for you and your family. I will say this, if you winterize with antifreeze, you should sanitize your plumbing system when you dewinterize in the spring. Certain antifreeze products can leave a slight odor or taste in the lines if not completely flushed out, and sanitizing the lines will help speed up this process. I think the last thing that's worth mentioning is the confidence level of using each method. Again, you can absolutely winterize with compressed air successfully and not have any issues after you dewinterize in the spring, but blowing out lines will never get all the water out of your plumbing system. Droplets are going to remain in the plumbing lines and you're going to need a lot more pressure than your lines and fittings can handle to get all of that water out. I think the key to using compressed air to properly winterize is making sure that number one, you blow out every line that sees water during the camping season, and number two, you blow air through that line until you see all the water that's going to come out, come out. With antifreeze, you see the antifreeze come out of the faucet, so you know that all the water has been pushed out, and you know that there's antifreeze in that entire line. That assurance is probably the main reason why people who use the antifreeze method choose that method. Again, it's not my job to convince you one way or the other, but these are the things people are talking about in winterizing discussions. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. There are steps in both processes that are exactly the same. Ah, uh, So I'm going to use the same footage for those parts of the process because honestly, sometimes these videos take a lot of time to make. If you wanna watch the antifreeze method, click this video right here. And if you wanna watch the compressed air video, that one's right over here. And I'll put links to the other video at the end of each video in case you wanna watch both. Don't forget to hit that like button and we hope you consider subscribing so you never miss a new video. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Happy camping. <laughs>